The LA Kings have named Jim Hiller as their next head coach. Joining us to discuss is Kings insider Zach Dooley on this edition of Locked On LA Kings. You are Locked On Kings, your daily podcast on the Los Angeles Kings. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey, Kings fans, welcome to Locked On LA Kings, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thanks for making Locked On LA Kings your first listen every day. We are free and available wherever you get your podcasts, and we're also on YouTube. Please like and subscribe if you're enjoying this content. I'm Eddie Garcia, your host of Locked On LA Kings. I've worked in sports media for the last 30 years, 20 plus years of the Fox Sports Radio Network, also co-host of the Puck Podcast. It's a weekly NHL review show that's been putting out content for the past 17 years and a passionate LA Kings fan for over 30 years. Today's episode is brought to you by Indeed. There is no I in team, but there is one in Indeed, and that's the hiring platform you need to build yours. Start hiring now with a $75 sponsored job credit to upgrade your job post at Indeed.com slash locked on. Terms and conditions apply. Need to hire you need indeed. Well, we are happy to be joined by a friend of the show and LA Kings insider, Zach Dooley, who covers the LA Kings, obviously. Uh, follow him on X Twitter. He is at Dooley, L-A-K, D-O-O-L-E-Y. Uh, also read his work at LAKingsInsider.com. Hey, Zach, how are you today? Eddie, doing well. How about yourself? Doing good. And uh, they say timing's everything. And uh, on the day where we got the announcement that Jim Hiller has had the interim tag removed, and he's the next Kings head coach. Uh, we're happy to have you on to talk about it. So I know there's an introductory press conference tomorrow, 10 a.m. Pacific time. I know you're going to be there. Um, but any insights on how this decision was made, the timing of it, or maybe any contract details you could share? To be honest, I think that's probably better served to wait and see what comes tomorrow. Um you know that after exit interviews, uh, Rob Blake talked about wanting to sit down directly with Jim Hiller to hear about what he would do if he was given the bump from interim head coach to head coach. Uh, we don't know exactly what went down in that conversation, but I know that that had to have been important in the decision to move forward with Hiller. Um, were it simply status quo, we're going to do everything the same and hope for a different outcome. I don't think that's the move the Kings would have made. I think they might have looked elsewhere. They seem satisfied with what Jim Hiller had to say in those meetings. Um, there'll certainly be changes of some kind. I you know, don't have the specific, but I imagine those questions will be asked. Some of those answers will be given in tomorrow's press conference. Um, and very interested to see you know, what some of those answers are. Obviously, we kind of know the sentiment of, of the Kings fan base coming out of that playoff series against the Oilers. Um, but I don't think that we have to be so down on the guy coming in. He's a different guy in a different situation than he was when he took over the team mid season. And I'm excited to hear what he has to say about what might be coming. That could be different perhaps than what we saw during this past season. Before we talk a little bit more specifically about Jim Hiller, um, just on the coaching search, uh, if there kind of was one to your, to your knowledge, did the Kings talk to anyone outside the organization um i'm not sure you know when you listen kind of around the hockey community you always heard jim's name tied to the position um obviously um but again i think that's one that it's a question that'll be asked tomorrow and i think it's one that's better to come from the horse's mouth than you know my own speculation uh do you have any knowledge if ontario rain head coach marco sturm was interviewed i do not uh, and do you have any knowledge if he's been, uh, if the San Jose Sharks have asked permission to speak to Marco Sturm about their coaching vacancy? Nope. Um, you know, Marco sees himself as a head coach. You know, I know that he's not interested in the assistant job that's open with the LA Kings. Um, as for his future, I mean, the rain just finished their season three days ago, um, you know, held their exit interviews over the last couple of days. Um, not sure exactly where, where Marco's head is at. Um, but I know that he wants to be an NHL head coach. Um, and if that path forward presents itself, you know, I'm, I'm certain that he would pursue it. I think he said after game three in Ontario, he's like, I, I will be the an NHL head coach or the head coach of the Ontario reign. Not interested in an assistant role. He was an assistant with the LA Kings in the past. So whether that's in Ontario or in the NHL, um, that's where Marco's path is going to be as a head coach. Well, again, the press conference coming up tomorrow morning. I know you're going to be there. 
Uh, let's say you get the first question. It could be to either Rob Blake or Jim Hiller. What would the first question be that you would like to ask? I would ask Jim Hiller when he took over the team in February versus taking over the team now. You had a very specific goal in February, which was to get this team into the playoffs. What types of different changes would you be implementing for a team that's approaching a full season versus a team that had two practices before a bunch of must win games? And to me, that that answer is important. Not that he has to give specific details because I can't think of too many coaches or managers who would be opening up you know, specific details on, on those types of things. But you want to know what's going to be done with several months with a full training camp, with a full season to prepare versus a team that had lost a ton of games and needed to get back on track. That's personally where I would start um, if I had that question. Just kind of generally speaking, what are your thoughts on the benefits of having a coach that has had some experience with the team he's taking over uh, as opposed to bringing in a completely outside voice from somewhere else? I think the benefits are we kind of saw them when he took over in season, right? That this isn't a new roster for Jim Hiller. He knows these players as people. He has a better idea of what might make certain players tick, what certain players strengths and weaknesses are. There's no getting to know you process when the coach you're hiring came from within the organization. That process has already been done. You know, he, he did that over his first couple of years here. So I think that, you know, you can obviously look at pros and cons to both sides of it. Um, One benefit that Jim Hiller has is he has coached these players before. He knows how he sees certain things. He knows how he sees certain people. And I think that that gives him a bit of a leg up in that department is he was able to do some things in February, March, and April to get the team into the postseason. And he does have the, the advantage of knowing how those things worked or didn't work. He almost had a trial run there to, try out certain things that he thought might work. Now he has the option to review those things and see what he might want to do differently or the same going into next year. Any knowledge on what's going on with the assistants? Is DJ Smith going to stick around? We know that there's a vacancy now with Trent Yanni having departed. Are they still looking to fill that vacancy? Do you know if they might make an announcement at the press conference? Anything regarding the assistant coaches? Not sure if there would be an announcement at the press conference. Um, Seems to be the assumption DJ would continue um, on Jim Hiller's staff. Obviously, Trent Yanni and the Kings parted ways um, earlier. I think it was last week. Um, So that does leave an opening behind the bench for an assistant. So the Kings certainly will look to fill that down the road. Is that coming with the announcement or excuse me, with the press conference tomorrow? Um, No indications that that is the case. Um, but they certainly do have an opening, an open spot on the staff that they need to round out. And there is some time to do it. In the past, the Kings have hired assistants later in the summer. When Jim Hiller came on board, it was a July announcement. Um, so there's not a rush, I don't think, to get that done. But at the same time, there's a lot of teams in the coaching market right now. So if there are candidates the Kings are interested in, they're not, they're not just going to sit back either. They're going to start to have those conversations if they haven't already. And just from a story standpoint, obviously, uh, you know, you writing at uh, kingsinsider.com and, you know, looking for stories, interesting stories to write about. It is an interesting story, as Jim Hiller was once a draft pick of the L.A. Kings, played for them initially to start his career. And, you know, the story of him coming back and now getting the job full time for his first NHL head coaching job. You know, the interim, obviously, we know that. But being, as, as you've talked about, getting to have a full training camp getting to put his stamp on this team, whatever that might be. And we'll talk more about that in a second, but it is a, it's a good story uh, for Jim Hiller. Certainly. I mean, it clearly meant a lot to him to coach the LA Kings specifically, right? Uh, Going back to his first game that went over the Oilers, like it it meant something to Jim Hiller that his first game as a head coach came with the team that drafted him. Um, It's a sentimental thing. It's not why you make decisions like this. You make decisions like this for the, for the advancement of your franchise on the ice, but it's a nice thing to have a guy who wants to be the head coach in LA, wants to be the head coach of the Kings. Um, you don't always find that. Sometimes it's, it's more of someone who's just the best fit for the job, whatever it is. So in this case, the Kings felt that Hiller was not only the best fit for the job, but it, I do think it, it's a cool story, like you said, that, that it does mean something to him, that the team that drafted him 
the team he made his NHL debut with is also the team that he gets his first full-time head coaching opportunity with. I know Luke Robitaille uh, talked about family in the press conference that uh, they had at the end of the year. So Jim Hill is certainly a, a bit of a part of the Kings family, uh, certainly to start his career as a player and now getting a chance at his uh, first NHL head coaching job. Uh, we're going to talk more about maybe some of the um, philosophies and strategies that Jim Hiller might implement going forward into next season. We'll do that with the Kings insider, Zach Dooley, here on Lockdown LA Kings, your team every day. No matter how long uh, or how how long, no matter how the last game went, anytime you take the field, you got a shot at greatness. Give your team the best shot at winning by recruiting more MVPs with Indeed, because Indeed is the hiring platform where you can attract, interview, and hire all in one place. Indeed is the only job site where you're guaranteed to find quality applications that meet your must-have requirements or else you don't pay. Indeed partners with you on every step of the hiring process. You can find great talent through their time-saving tools like Indeed Instant Match assessments and virtual interviews. With Indeed Match, as soon as you sponsor a post, you get a short list of qualified candidates with resumes on Indeed that match your must-have description, and you can invite them to apply right away. Plus, you only pay for quality applications that meet your must-have requirement. Start hiring right now with a $75 sponsored job credit to upgrade your job post at Indeed.com slash locked on. Offer valid through the rest of the month. Go to Indeed.com slash locked on to claim your $75 credit before the end of the month. Indeed.com slash locked on. Terms and conditions apply. Need to hire? Then you need Indeed. We continue with Zach Dooley, the LA Kings insider, and mentioned that Jim Hiller has never been a head coach at the NHL level other than his brief stint uh, as the interim coach last season. He has been a head coach in junior hockey in the Western Hockey League, uh, certainly has been an assistant uh, with several teams. Is there any indication that we have as to what his coaching style is or how the Kings might look differently on the ice as far as strategy, scheme, that kind of thing? This is a guy who is thought of around, you know, the hockey community as having innovative offensive ideas, right? We He obviously came in and worked with the power play. He's a guy who dating back to his time in the WHL, the word on him is a guy who is innovative and drives offensive game. And if you look at the way the Kings played last year, they were a top five team in just about every defensive category, but they were around the league average offensively. And I think that the plan going forward is to obviously they got to score more goals. Um, no doubt about it, but they can't just open the floodgates and become a sieve defensively in order to score more goals. So that's the balance. I think that Hiller is going to have to be tasked with finding is how can he get more out of this team offensively without sacrificing what this team has done so well, which is the defensive side of the game, the playoffs aside, the playoffs, the defensive side was not there, especially on the penalty kill. But the Kings, over 82 games, were one of the best defensive teams in the league by just about every metric, but the offensive side just didn't match that. So I I think that is what they're looking at Jim Hiller to provide. He has that background. He's worked with power plays. He's worked with teams on generating more offense. Um, And I think that's that's how he's kind of seen in the coaching circle in the hockey community. I'm sure one of the first questions that will be asked of Jim Hiller is his thoughts on how to handle the Pierre-Luc Dubois situation, if you want to call it that. Uh, did you think that PLD played better under Jim Hiller once he took over? And how do you think he does handle that situation? I thought that right at the start of Jim Hiller's tenure, he did play better. I thought we saw a stretch, what was it, you know, maybe 10 to 12 games where we saw that higher level from Dubois. And then I think we kind of saw his play return to where it was down the stretch and into the playoffs. Um, Look, it's a situation that has to change, right? He has to get better. He has to improve. Um, I thought at Dubois exit interview, he was very accountable for his own play. He said that pretty directly. He needs to be better. Um, I'm certain that Jim Hiller has some ideas and some plans in place for what he's going to do. I know the organization spoke about that a lot in Rob Blake's exit interview. He spoke about, you know, needing to get more from Dubois. Dubois has talked about putting certain things into the summer. He's over at the world championships, maybe trying to get some positive vibes, if you will, to end his season on the ice. Um, There's not a magic formula. Otherwise it would have already been done, but it's obvious that, that he has to be better. And 
part of Jim Hiller's job will be to make Pierre-Luc Dubois better and to put him into the right situations to be successful with a full off season in which to plan. That has to be the hope is that he's able to find a way to do that because he's a guy who's signed for seven more years. He signed at a high salary hit and he, he just has to find a way to deliver more than he did this year. Since we last spoke with you, um, we've obviously learned that GM Rob Blake is going to be back uh, for another season. Um, I know that uh, this season obviously didn't end the way anyone wanted it to, um, but now Jim Hiller is is being brought back. So it's there is a bit of a feel of kind of running it back again for next season. Are you surprised that there haven't been any changes, um, more changes, I guess, for the LA Kings this offseason? Um, I think that the, there will be changes not changes in those two positions. Um, but the Kings have what 12 players signed. They have a coach who we don't know the strategies and the systems that he's going to implement. Um, I'd love for you to ask me that question, October, whatever, when the Kings open the year, right? How, do we know what the roster is going to look like? Do we know what systems the team's going to play? Do we know how certain things are going to play out at the moment? You're right. I mean, there hasn't really been much change. The only moves have been extending Hiller and signing David Riddick to a one-year extension. So nothing has changed to date, but the Kings don't play a game for five months. So yeah, I, I do get that sentiment, but I don't think it's fair until we see how the entire process plays out to just say they're running it back. If they do the exact same things and the results don't change, it's very fair. But I think we have to at least see how the entire process plays out. We haven't had the draft. We haven't seen any trades. We haven't seen free agency. We just it's too incomplete of a picture, in my opinion, when you have 12 players, 13 players under contract to know, is it truly running it back or are there going to be some changes to the way this team plays, the way this team's made up? So the GM will be back. The head coach is now in place. We do have some assistance maybe to, to iron that out. Uh, so it's kind of onto the priority of the roster now at this point, I would think, for Rob Blake. Do you believe the number one priority at this point is to get Quinton Byfield uh, signed? 100%. Um, breakout year for him, right? 20 goals, 55 points. When you look at the salary cap puzzle, um, the Kings have some room, but it's not unlimited. And the costliest decision they have to make is with regards to Quinton Byfield. Two distinct options I think they could take. There's a bridge deal and there's a long-term deal. The bridge deal comes with lesser term and a lower cap hit. The long-term deal comes with more years and a higher cap hit now. There's pros and cons to both situations for player and for team. Um, I think that has to be the number one priority for sure. That's a core piece for the Kings going forward. Uh, they believe in Byfield as a part of the core, as a part of the present and the future. Um, so they, they do have to get him locked in. But when I say that, it doesn't mean he's going to be the first player signed, right? RFA negotiations can, they don't have a, an end date of July 1st and that player goes away. Um, those can extend a little bit further. So Byfield won't necessarily be the first player signed, but I do think in that pecking order, um, he's got to be, you know, the number one priority for this team for sure. And obviously goaltending, you mentioned David Riddich is back, certainly reliable backup veteran guy. I know Phoenix Copley has just started his rehab, getting back on the ice from his knee injury. I know Cam Talbot in his exit interview has said that he would like to come back with the LA Kings next season. Uh, the Kings had three different starting goalies for three different playoff years. So who knows what, what that's going to, the stability is not quite there, but you understand why the one-year deals and the contracts, things like that. Um, any feel on what the goaltending situation could be? Could we see Cam Talbot coming back or are there still dominoes that need to fall before we kind of get to that point? I certainly wouldn't rule it out just yet. Um, the tandem of Riddick Talbot was fourth in the NHL in save percentage. Obviously didn't get the job done in the postseason. So I certainly wouldn't rule it out, um, but the Kings have to look at their options, right? We've seen them linked to veteran goaltenders around the league over the last couple of years. Rob Blake said at his press conference that the long-term solution in net, meaning this current contending window, if you want to call it that, is not in place right now. Um, so even if the Kings say did run back Talbot Riddick, not sure that that's the plan, but that's not the long-term answer. Um, there's a lot of hope that Eric Portillo down in Ontario could maybe be that solution down the road, but goaltenders require development. They require time. He's not there just yet. So the Kings do need to find that longer term solution in net. 
Um, at the age Talbot's at right now, he's not that guy, but he proved that he could handle it, right? He could still handle, you know, an NHL workload. He's still a, an NHL goaltender. Um, and he came at a very modest cap hit. I think the Kings were 31st of the 32 teams in the league in goaltending salary cap hits, but fourth in save percentage. That's a pretty good return on investment. Um, so maybe after Byfield, that's your number two priority, right? You have Quinton's deal, obviously. You got to find that long-term solution in net for sure. Um, is it this offseason or not? There, there are some names who are you know, probably going to be out there. Um, Kings have a certain number of assets, a certain amount of salary cap space. They got to figure out if goaltending, how they want to, you know, assign that to the goaltending position. Up next, we'll look ahead to next season and potentially some of the younger faces that we could see on the Kings roster. We'll do that with the LA Kings insider Zach Dooley here next on Locked on LA Kings, your team every day. It's playoff time in the NBA and NHL. Baseball is in full swing and FanDuel is your place to bet on every game. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets guaranteed. That's $150 win or lose. Bet on everything from slap shots to home runs to slam dunks. All on an app that is safe, secure, and easy to use. Unfortunately, we can't bet on the Kings or the Lakers or Clippers, but we could bet against the teams that beat our teams like the Oilers and the Mavericks. Uh, The Dodgers, of course, are in first place, one of the favorites to win it all, and it's still a great time of the year to be a sports fan and you can have more fun with it by winning with FanDuel. You can bet on who will win, who will lose in things like how many home runs Shohei Otani might hit. You can do it all with FanDuel. What are you waiting for? Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and make your first bet an automatic win. FanDuel, America's number one sports book. All right, we continue with LA Kings insider Zach Dooley. Uh, and obviously, uh, Rob Blake talked about it at his press conference, uh, some faces, not new faces necessarily, but some younger players within the organization of the Kings looking to get a chance to prove themselves as full-time NHL players, possibly next season. We got a glimpse of some of them this year, Alex Turcott, Akil Thomas, but let's focus on probably the biggest name, I guess would be Brant Clark. Um, will there be an opening for him on the right side? That remains to be seen with the situation with Matt Roy. But what was his season like from everything you've heard in Ontario with the AHL? Are the Kings happy with the way his development is going? And are they looking to potentially have him take a bigger role with the Kings or with the, with the Kings, a role with the Kings uh, next season? I think that's certainly the plan. Um, I think you have a player whose offensive game is already NHL ready. Um, I think you have a guy who showed he can make plays. He has a lot of poise with the puck. Um, the whole offensive side of the game is there. It's the defensive side that he's still adjusting to. And you see that a lot of times with younger players. Um, but at some point, Brent Clark has to be given the chance to show what he can do over an extended stretch in the NHL. It can't be one game in, one game out. It can't be you make a mistake this game, you're going to be sat the next game. He has to be able to work through the mistakes that he's going to make that every young defenseman makes. And we have to see how he responds to that over an extended stretch. So I, I do think the Kings are looking at a player like Clark as being on the team next year. There's obviously training camp. He's going to have to earn that spot. But I think he's a guy who's certainly going to be heavily considered for a a spot on the team next year. Um, And it could be with Matt Roy, right? You know, they could play with four right shot D. There could be something that happens elsewhere. Like, it doesn't just have to be one or the other for sure. Um, But I think that Clark's at that place where he's ready to, to test his game at the NHL level. The offensive tools are excellent. Those are already in place. We've got to see how he can hold up all over the ice, 200 feet at the NHL level for more than just a seventh defenseman role or in every other night situation. We got a glimpse of Alex Turcotte, a little bit of Akil Thomas, liked certainly what he's did in a very small sample size. Samuel Fogimo had a great year in the AHL. But I look at a guy like Alex Oferrier, and we I don't think anyone could have predicted that he would play 81 of 82 games with the Kings, right, going into – last season is there anyone out there with the Ontario rain or anyone in the organization that you could see as maybe somebody that we're not really talking about or maybe we didn't get a glimpse of really that has the potential for maybe to get an opportunity and surprise so I'm going to throw out a name that the Kings actually just signed uh Atu Yamsen um signed from Finland was about two thirds point per game in Liga, which is the top men's league in Finland. Um, 21 year old player playing at the highest men's level in Finland. Um, Not an easy task for a younger player. It's, you know, one of the best leagues in the world below 
you know, the NHL um, in Europe. So is he going to come over, crack the Kings out of camp? I can't say that he's going to, but I really like the value that he's offered as a seventh round pick. Um, he just signed his NHL contract with the Kings. Um, so he's got an opportunity to come over and showcase what he can do on a smaller rink. Um, I think there'll be some adjustments, but he's talked about building strength, being more engaged in puck battles and kind of adjusting his game to playing over in North America. So I'm not sure if he's quite as NHL ready as the Ferrier was, but I don't think that anyone would have been saying in May of 2023 that Alex the Ferrier was going to be NHL ready either. So I'm excited to see what he does in camp. It'll be his first training camp with the Kings and the Kings need players in that 21, 22 year old age range to come in and progress. So he's a guy that no guarantees, but I'm really excited to kind of see how he adjusts his game when he comes over. He is Zach Dooley. He is the LA Kings insider. Of course, follow him uh, on X and Twitter at Dooley LAK. Read him at LAKingsInsider.com. Obviously, he's going to have lots of stuff going on tomorrow with the uh, introductory press conference. Uh, conference. And then, of course, this offseason, there's a lot going on with the Kings getting the roster together, the NHL draft. So there's still the season's over, but there's still a lot going on at LAKingsInsider.com. And uh, Zach, we always appreciate your time. Thanks for joining us and getting, giving us your thoughts on things. Eddie, we probably should have done this tomorrow, man. I feel like I not answered you on a couple of those no. at the beginning, but we'll we'll do an addendum and we'll we'll fill that in uh, once we hear from Jimmy. For sure, we'll have a chance to uh, talk a lot more about what's going on with the Kings this off season. And again, always appreciate your time. I know it's a busy time right now for you. Thanks, Zach. Appreciate it. No worries. Yeah, thanks for having okay. me. Okay, thank you. All right, that was LA Kings insider Zach Dooley, and we thank him for his time. Uh, we thank you for your time. Uh, if you're one of our everydayers that you listen and watch Locked On LA Kings every day. Uh, Coming up on Thursday, obviously, we are going to react to what is said by GM Rob Blake and new LA Kings head coach Jim Hiller at that introductory press conference. We'll break down the answers and the questions uh, and see what they have to say about this this new era of LA Kings hockey going forward with Jim Hiller as the head coach. Of course, Friday, it's another Kings fan feedback show. I would expect to get lots of thoughts on uh, from you on what you think about Jim Hiller as the Kings next head coach. If you want to send an email for that show, the email address is lockedoneddy at gmail.com, E-D-D-I-E. You can always leave your comments in the uh, comment section if you're watching on YouTube. Those comments always help out the algorithm and help the show to be found. Appreciate that. Uh, and if you want to stay interactive with the show on social media, X, Twitter, and Instagram, we are at Locked On LA Kings. I'm Eddie Garcia. Thank you for listening and watching this episode of Locked On LA Kings, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Have a great rest of your day. We will talk to you on Thursday. And as always, go Kings go.